everyone, this is Gina. Today I'm going to show you how to make this necklace that I am calling Midnight Shimmer. It is made with the Midnight Blue treasure bag. However, I do have some of these components and things available in the store so that you can make this necklace if you would like, or you can just get these particular components and make it any way you want. The technique is what I'm showing you, so you will learn how to attach the components together and you can get this basic shape. And this is really pretty on the neck. Laying here on my desk, it's not nearly as pretty as it is on the neck model or on the neck itself. It's really it hangs very nicely. It's just gorgeous and it's not huge in scale. It's smaller. So it looks really nice. If you see next to my hands, it's not a huge necklace. It is a statement piece, but it's not really, really big. And then I'm going to show you how to make a little pair of matching earrings. These are just really simple little earrings to go with the necklace. And let's go ahead and look and see what it takes to make this necklace. Okay, let's go through what we need for this particular project. We will be using several items from the Midnight Blue Treasure Bag. However, I do have some of these items a little bit extra from the bag and I will post them on my website if you would like to get them. As long as you have these three components that came in the treasure bag, you can do this project. You can use whatever beads you would like with it. You just need to have these components. So I do have quite a few of these left and I will post them on the website. And I'll put a link in the description box beneath the video player. So we're going to be using these three components, obviously. And then we're also going to be using the chain that came in the treasure bag. However, we're only going to be using about six to eight inches of it and there's two meters in there. So we will not be using all of that. And then we're going to be using the twisted drops and I do have some of these left and I'll post them also. These are the little twisted drop beads that came in the treasure bag and 12 of them came in the treasure bag and we'll probably use about 10 of them. And then we're going to be using this little pendant with the pinch bail, the little um, gunmetal pinch bail with the rhinestone here. And I will post some of these too because I have some of these left also. We're also going to be using the triangle beads that came in your bag. Now I do not have any more of these in particular, but I do have some mixes on the website. Like this is the black mix. There's several different color mixes, so you could make it in another color if you'd like even. But I do have some of these if you would like to make this project with these. Otherwise, you can just use bicones, you can use cuboids, you could use a silver sp sparkle cuboid would work really good. You can use almost anything you'd like, you just have to adjust the length of the components you make to accommodate the bead that you use. Then we're going to be using some four millimeter jump rings. We'll be adding this to the treasure bag because I did not include any of the jump rings or head pins and eye pins we'll need for this project. So um, you're going to need about 25, that's a rough estimate, and then of the four millimeter round, and then about four of uh, six millimeter round. I think I actually have out eight. I'm going to check on this. Um, I want them to be six millimeter round, and I think I put out eight millimeter round. Let me see. Yes, I did. We're going to use about four six millimeter round jump rings, and then we're going to use some eye, eye pins, and we're going to use about four head pins, and I'll put everything in captions so that I don't have to try to guess how many there will be. And then we're going to use the, one of the clasps that came in the treasure bag. And I do have some of these left too, so I'll post them also. As far as the gunmetal findings, I just went to Michael's and bought a package like this. So it has all different sizes of the eye pins. I also got one of head pins. So um, you can find some gunmetal findings at Michael's or you can probably find some at Hobby Lobby or just online. You should be able to find some 
on Amazon if you would like to get some gunmetal findings. I don't carry a bunch of findings because I try to keep my store small and manageable and a bunch of little findings is just a little bit overwhelming for me at this point, so I don't carry them. You will also need a pair of ear wires because we will make a matching pair of earrings for this necklace. And that's what we will be using. Let's go ahead and get started. Okay, for this video, we are going to make four different looped components that we will put together with the chandelier components and make this necklace. I'm going to show you how to make each looped component and then we'll come back after we've made them all and we'll put them together. So we're going to start with an eye pin and three of our triangle beads and we're going to just put the three triangle beads on to this head pin. So we're going to make two components that are just looped on either side with three triangle beads. So once you have dropped three triangle beads down onto your wire onto your eye pin, then you are going to grab a pair of flat nose pliers and right above that last bead, just about a millimeter above it, not even, just real close to it, enough room for your pliers, you're going to bend your wire over the top of that bead, just like this. Then I like to just hold it in my hand, kind of an L shape, so that the wire is over my forefinger, and then I can judge how much wire I need for my loop. I cut about a quarter inch right here. And once I've cut that off, then I will grab my round nose pliers and I will place it at the very end of the wire. Now I don't want to make a large loop, so I'm going to be towards the narrowest part of my plier on the tip here, and then I'm just going to start to turn. I'm going to turn as far as I can, and then I'm just going to flip my um, pliers over, replace them in that loop, and then turn the rest of the way until I get a nice little loop on the end of my component like this. So we are going to make two of these and then once we have two of them, which I've made one off camera, so I have two here, we're going to move on into making a component with four of our triangle beads instead of three. So it's exactly the same thing. I'll go ahead and do it just to say we did. And we're going to pick up four of the triangle beads onto the head pin. And once you've slid it down the head pin, same thing. I'm just going to hold it in my hand to where it the wire doesn't move around, I just kind of stop it with my finger and that way I can make sure that my beads are down towards the bottom and I get the right amount of tension on here. Now I'm just going slightly above that last bead and I'm going to bend my wire over. That'll stop my beads from falling off and kind of give me a guide to where I need to be. And then I will Cut this down to about a quarter of an inch and grab it at the end of my pliers. Make sure the wire is flush with your pliers on this side and then begin to turn. Flip your pliers over and continue to turn until you close that loop. Now, if you don't get it closed all the way, you can lift the wire a little bit and then bring it back down and close it. Let me get you close so you can see and I'll do that again. So if you need to close it, you just lift your wire like this and then you bring it in towards the straight part of your wire and just shimmy it down until you get a closed loop. Now you're going to make <clears throat> And of course you can straighten out your loop ends too if they get kind of crinkly. And if they're not the same on either side, you just grab one side with your plier and one side with another pair of pliers and you turn them until they're the same. 
if your wire is a little crooked inside, just kind of adjust it. And then you can make a nice looking component. You are going to make eight of these components with the four triangle beads on them. Then, once you have made the eight of those, which I have my eight here, then we're going to move them aside and we're going to make two single components with the larger drop beads. So you're going to grab one of your head pins and it's exactly the same process. So you're going to drop it down on the head pin or the eye pin, excuse me, we are using eye pins at this point. And we are going to do the exact same thing, just a little bit above that bead. I'm going to kink that over all the way, just like that, and cut it down. Actually, it's a little too long. There we go. And then we're going to turn another loop. So place your pliers towards the narrower part of the pliers at the end of the wire. Turn as far as you can turn, flip your pliers over, and continue to turn until you have a nice little loop here, just like that. You can then, of course, straighten out the ends, make sure they're the same by putting your two sets of pliers on either side and turning them until they're at the same angle. And you're going to make two components like this. So once you have your two components like this, we are going to move into making four components with one of your drop beads and one of your triangle beads. So this time we're going to use a head pin instead of an eye pin. So the head pin is the one that looks like a little nail and we're going to drop the drop bead on first and then we're going to put on the triangle bead and then of course it's the same process just make sure your eye pin stays firmly in the bottom of your beads here not moving around hold on to it bend it over cut down your eye pin or your head pin, head pin, eye pin, they're just gonna confuse me. I, I, they're all the same thing, I guess, I don't know. But anyway, this is a head pin, and I'm just going to turn it just like I have been with all the others until I get a nice little loop. Now, if your loop is off-center, let me get you in close so you can see what I'm talking about. If your loop is off-center when you turn it, you can put your pliers back in towards the back straight part of that loop, bend it back, and then you can arrange your little loop. So you're going to make four components like this now. And we'll be back. Okay, so I have made four of these components now, and I'm going to set them aside. I'm going to grab one of my chandelier components, and I'm going to orient it on my bead mat so that the single loop is down or towards me and the multiple loops are away from me. We're going to attach our pendant first because this will kind of orient everything for us, keep us knowing exactly where we need to attach once we start putting the components together. So we're going to grab a four millimeter round jump ring and I'm holding half the jump ring in one of my pliers. The opening is right here. I'm going to grab another pair of pliers and I'm just going to twist it open like this. And I've twisted it open pretty wide because these components are kind of thick. And then I'm going to put my pendant on it. Make sure that your component is the right direction because the other side has, um, it's kind of hollow in the center and it's raised on the proper side. So you wanna make sure that you have the right side of your component, and then you're just going to slide this jump ring and pendant onto that component, and you're going to close the jump ring the same way that you opened it. So just twist it closed, make sure it's closed tightly, and then you should have this, just like that. Now, 
we are going to connect the other components like this. So you're going to have your loops up, your single loops up, and your multiple loops down this time. And we're going to connect from these loops like this. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with the single drop components that are on the head pins. If I have the loops on either side and we're going to attach them from this bottom loop to this bottom loop. Make sure both of these, com these components are the right side up as we discussed with the other one and then grab a four millimeter round jump ring and these jump rings are kind of strange so I have to doctor them up a little bit here. Now again I'm just going to twist it open rather widely and then I'm going to make sure when I attach this I'm going to attach it to this one first so that I don't flip my component the wrong way. So I'm going to put it on the loop of the drop bead here and then I'm going to put it on the bottom loop the most center bottom loop and then I'm going to close it. Then I'm going to grab another four millimeter round and I'm going to open it and again I'm going to grab my component first so that I make sure I don't flip it over, put my jump ring in it, maybe, come here, and then I will drop on my component. Make sure you don't flip anything around because it will happen and your uh, chandelier components will be backwards. <laughs> and then I'm going to close this jump ring the best I can. They are not cut the best, these jump rings, so, you know, what are you going to do? So, like this. This is what it should look like. Now, we could go ahead and attach this side too. But I think we're going to go ahead and do just one side first and then we'll do the other side. Um, it might be a little bit easier that way. So let's go ahead and work on just completely attaching one component and then we'll completely attach the other component. There will be more to dangle around as we attach this one, but I think it will be a little bit more stable that way. So now you're going to take <clears throat> one of your components with the three triangle beads and you're going to put it in the center. It's important that you grab one of the ones with three beads for this one. And then you're going to open another jump ring and then we're going to pick up the component and then put on a little triangle component and close it. Make sure you get them closed as tightly as you can. Then arrange everything again. And then one more time, we're going to pick up another <clears throat> component. And we're going to attach to the middle on the second chandelier component. Close the jump ring. These jump rings I'm telling you, I bought these little packages because I didn't have any gunmetal components, but I don't know. They're not the best in the world. And so that's what that should look like so far. Now you're going to grab a four triangle component and we're going to attach it the same way. So just grab one of your jump rings, open it rather widely, and Put it on the component and then drop on your component, your other component. Pick up a component, put it on the component, yeah, yeah, you know what I mean. And we're going to close this jump ring and then straighten it all back out 
and then we're going to attach the other end. So open another jump ring. and attach it. Did I get that closed? Yes, I did. Okay. So, that's what that looks like. Now we're going to do the same thing with this component. Make sure again that your component is face up. And then we're going to start with the bottom component. So we're going to put the big drop component here and I'm just going to show you the first one then I'll do the last two off camera just so you can see how you kind of have to handle it. It's just a lot. It's a lot to pick up and attach but you can do it. So I'm going to put the jump ring on the component first. Let me open that a little wider. So I'm going to leave it down on my bead mat as much as I can. And then that way I can kind of balance without dangling it all over the place. So I'm just working down towards my bead mat here. And I'm closing the jump, jump ring. And then reorient this and grab another jump ring and open it. I think I'm going to grab this first so I can make sure I don't flip my component over and then I'll just leave it on the bead mat and close it the best I can. Just like that. Now, we have to do the three component here and the four component here. So just keep the best balance you can if you leave most of the weight on the bead mat and kind of work from the bead mat. You can go ahead and get your components on without a bunch of craziness. So go ahead and attach the middle and the upper one and we'll be back. Okay, so I put the middle one on. When you go to do the top one, you will be attaching to the one that this one's already attached to, and that's okay. Just grab a hold of your jump ring, open it wide, and put it in that loop. Grab your component, and close the jump ring. Straighten everything out. And then you can go ahead and attach to this side. So go ahead and do that and we'll be back. Okay, so this is what you should have now. Now, we're going to take these dangles that we made with the drop and the triangle bead and we're going to just attach them on either side here. So, we're going to grab a jump ring again. We're still using the four millimeter round jump rings and I'm going to open one and I'm going to put it on the loop of the component just like this and again put it through my loop leaving the main bulk. You can lift up of course the component you're working on. Leave the main bulk of it on your bead mat and just close it. and then straighten it back out like that. Then I'm going to attach this one here and these two to this side. So go ahead and put all four of these drops on and we'll be okay, back. Okay, so now you should have something that looks like this. You've got all four of your dangles attached and now you're going to cut two pieces of chain. You're going to make them three and a half inches long. Now, 
this is going to make an 18 inch necklace around the top and of course it will hang deeper on your chest because of all the mass here but around your neck it will be 18 inches if you do it exactly the same way I am and you're using the same chain I am or if you cut three and a half inches regardless of your chain you're going to get an 18 inch necklace so um, if you want a longer necklace, then of course cut more. If you want a shorter necklace, cut less. Cut two pieces that are exactly identical. So once you've done that, just put them on a head pin in the first link and just compare them. Well, come here. That link is open, I think. And make sure they are exactly the same length like this. You can hold them up. I'm laying it down, which doesn't really help too much to see how perfect they are, but you can hold it up and you can see that they are the same length if you do it that way. Now, make sure that the links on the ends are closed all the way. This one's open a little. Since these are open links, you want to make sure that you close them just like you open and close a jump ring. Make sure that this link is closed on either side and just check them out make sure and then what we're going to do is we're going to grab the rest of these four triangle bead units here and we're going to attach them and we're going to use our six millimeter jump rings we're going to start with two four millimeter jump rings and then we're going to work into the four six millimeters and then we'll end with two more four millimeter jump rings so I'll have to get two more out. And we are going to start by opening one of the four millimeter jump rings and we're going to attach one of these four triangle units onto the end here. So I'm just gonna put on my jump ring I'm going to drop my unit on it and close it. Just like we've been doing with all the jump rings here. Make sure you get it closed nice and tight and then straighten everything back out because you're going to mess it all up. And then I'm going to put a six millimeter jump ring between are these my six or are they eight? Let me make sure because I thought I switched that out, but these are kind of heavy jump rings too, so yeah, it's a six. This one's cut better. So I'm going to open one of these and I'm going to slide it on the loop on the component I made and then I'm going to slide on another component. Those pliers are kind of round and that's not working so let me grab a different pair here get that nice and closed and that's what that should look like now you're going to do this with three of your components I may not have made enough components hmm okay so three. Oh, I have enough. Oh, sometimes I'm telling you my brain is on vacation or something. So three of these, and then I am going to grab another four millimeter jump ring. And I'm going to slide it on the chain and then slide the chain, the jump ring with the chain on it, onto the last component and close it. And actually we'll need even two more of our four millimeter jump rings because I think I would like to attach my clasping with a four millimeter jump ring. Hmm. Yeah, these jump rings. I don't, I'm telling you. 
Okay, so that's what that looks like. And now I am going to go to the end and I'm going to grab another four millimeter jump ring and I am going to open it. You know, you can use stainless steel color jump rings too. It works really well with the hematite color. So if you would like to do that, that would work great. That's what I was going to do until I decided to go buy some because I didn't have any and I kind of wish I would have used the other ones because these kind of stink. But I'm going to grab an end of my clasp and I'm going to put it on. And close it. Okay, so this is what we have. So go ahead and do the other side exactly the same way. Just attach with a four millimeter, put on your three, your four um, triangle unit, and then a six millimeter jump ring, another triangle, a six millimeter jump ring, another triangle, a four millimeter jump ring, your chain, a four millimeter jump ring, and your clasp, the other end of your clasp. And go ahead and do that, and we'll be back. Okay. So once you finish the other side, this is what it should look like. Uh, I will have this on a neck model for the um, main snapshot of this at the beginning of, and the end of the video and for the thumbnail so you can see what it looks like when it's hanging because when you put this on, it hangs perfectly. It's really pretty. Now, of course, the length of your chain is going to determine how it lays too. If it's higher up on your neck, it'll be more spread out. If you have it really long, it'll be more um, triangular. So that will make a difference on how it looks on your neck, the length of your actual upper part of your necklace will make a difference with it. And I think it's just really pretty. It's kind of gothic looking maybe. Um, I don't know, but I think it's really pretty. And I am going to make a pair of very simple earrings to go with it. So we've got this little pair here. It looks really pretty with it. And it's just real simple. So we're going to do okay, this. For this earring, we are going to use an eye pin, a head pin, and an ear wire, one of the drop beads, and one of the triangle beads. <clears throat> it's just a really simple design. You could put a few triangle beads on the bottom here too. You can make it longer, or you could just put a, like a little cluster of them. That would be pretty too. So we're going to pick up our triangle bead, and we're going to do a loop just like we've been doing. We're going to bend our wire over just above that bead. We're going to cut it down and then we are going to roll our loop to start and then just turn your pliers over and continue and this is what you have, just a little loop on there just like that and I need to close it because because it's open. So I'm going to close it by lifting it up and then just moving it towards the straight part and then closing it back down. And then I'm just going to do a wrap or a loop on this one. So I'm just going to grab a hold of my drop, put it on my eye pin this time and then I'm going to bend it over, cut it down, and then roll a loop. And close my loop. Then, I'm going to just open this little loop on the single little triangle bead here. I'm just going to lift it up and open it. 
and just light it on this drop bead and then I'm going to close it just like I close jump rings just twist it back down make sure it's nice and closed and then I will open this ear wire so you can see where it opens just lift it up just like you've been doing with your jump rings slide on the drop of course you could use jump rings on this too you could have a jump ring in between and that would give it more length too so you can do that too that's how you do that now I've got a very simple pair of earrings and like I said if I was ambitious enough I would make two or three more of these individual ones and hook them on here and have a little cluster on the bottom that would be really pretty too to have a cluster of the triangle beads on the bottom so of course you can modify it any way you want it's a very simple pair of earrings you have a pretty busy necklace so you don't need more than just a drop for your earrings so or I don't think I mean if you think so then you're right. There's no right or wrong. So, however you like it, you do it. So, let me straighten this all out. And like I said, on a neck model, you'll see how pretty this looks. But anyway, without me messing with it for 45 minutes here, that's the gist of it kind of sloppy but you know you get it you see you see the potential here don't you okay so that's what that looks like and um like i said there will be some of these things most all of this in the um on the website so if you didn't get a bag and you want to make one of these you can and of course you can alter you can um use alternate beads too. You do not have to have the triangle beads. You could use bicones, you could use whatever you wanted, just as long as you make them the right length for each of your components here. So you just have to spread it out, lay it out the way you want it. Of course, this could be further apart. It could be closer together. It doesn't matter. You just basically have to put it together where the top is a little bit longer then the middle, and the middle is a little bit longer than the bottom. However, these are pretty much the same. These, when it's hanging, drop down a little bit. So it's, um, it just depends on how you want to make it look. If you just connect your components this way, you will get basically the same look. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and I hope you try one. Bye-bye.